Matt and Joy, the studio system is dominated by the left. They made it big business and they made a lot of money from it. And now they're pushing these woke, on the nose stories at us. Um, doesn't that create a huge opportunity for regular Americans? It does. I, I mean, our studio system has been ran by very few people, and we have an opportunity to disrupt that whole system right now. We can create smaller studios. We can collaborate. We can be more cost-effective. We can do this across the globe. And right now, as we're seeing the studios, and, and I mean, we're watching the theaters collapse right now, and so people aren't watching their things at, at uh, theaters anymore. They're watching them on their devices at home, all that. And so we have a really big opportunity like never before. Yeah, and with that though, they have uh, writers, showrunners, publicity, channels, actors, investors. We have all of those available to us, but nobody's pulling them together. You're starting down that road, right? Yeah, that's that's been a passion of mine is to go in and meet with people from investors to to distribution companies to people that are working on studios to to creatives. And we've been talking about it. A lot of people um, the last couple decades have gone into Hollywood and served as Josephs and Daniels. But as you tell the story about yeah. Uh, so I think it's like the Josephs and the Daniels, you know, like, um, you know, the last couple of decades, Christians kind of realized we were losing this media war and realized like, oh, hey, we should probably get back involved. And uh, and so we know a lot of Christians that, you know, jumped into the industry, got in there, were a part of some massively huge projects, um, big blockbuster type stuff. And uh, and then all of a sudden there was this been this shift in and where now all of a sudden Nebuchadnezzar is no longer there and Belshazzar has taken his place and you know the temple objects are being you know desecrated, desecrated right and and people are going like I can't serve that anymore and so there's a swath of not just Christians but conservatives in the industry that are looking for another place to go and I think that provides an extraordinary opportunity for Renaissance because like you said you know it's not no it's not about focusing on the the woke and focusing on the themes and the stuff that they're trying to shove down their throat these people really just want to tell great stories and they spent time in the palace like Moses did right and learned how to lead and learned how to do it well and so we have this amazing opportunity to co yeah. coalesce that team together and really create some amazing stories that people really want to see. That's a great analogy. I love it. Uh, we did have the blockbusters, whether it, it is The Passion of the Christ with Mel Gibson or wh whether it is The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and the Chronicles of Narnia series. Uh, but, you know, investors want to get a return on their money, and, and Mel Gibson absolutely did. And some of these lower-budget Christian films will get in there and they'll make some money. Uh, but for the most part, the average American looks at the film industry, like my old boss uh, when I worked at Templeton, his clients basically funded Dirty Dancing, one of the huge breakout independent films in the history of independent films. They barely got their money back because of the way it was rigged against them. Is it possible? for conservatives, for Christians to make money with films? Yes, absolutely. I think that um, not only can they make money, I think that it's on God's heart to tell these stories. And we need to have not just one-offs. As, as Christians and conservatives, having one here and there, that's great, but we need to flood the world with content right now. The world is starving for quality storytelling. You need to know your audience. Is my audience three to five-year-olds? Is my audience a mature 18 plus? You know, we need to tell them stories. And so not only can there be a return on investment, if you are investing in a project that's, that's $250,000 and you get a return on investment and they make money of, of $500,000, that's great, that's small. So when you're talking about making a $50 million film and it makes $100 million plus in the box office or more, then those are really great returns on investment. So we actually need to get down to the nitty gritty and, and share the details. Like we've, we've just overlooked so many things in storytelling. And I think that, that, that it's the economic model is there, right? It's not, because, so Christians have become, because of our theme-based ideas of how to make movies, you know, we've become like passionate about like these causal mm -hmm. uh, one-offs, right? Where it's like, oh, give me some money so I can go and make my little $10 million movie or whatever, right? right? But we need to actually be savvy about it. We need to, to come at it as an investor and say like, okay, well, let's get like five or six ideas together. Let's package them properly. Treat let's it like bring, a business, diversify. It, treat it like a business, exactly. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that Christians have had mm -hmm. over the years is we haven't treated it like a business. We've been treating it like a charity.